Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial series. In this one we are going to be creating a roguelike RPG game. Uh, so the rogue games are this uh, very classic text-based role-playing game where it's graphical, oh, I shouldn't say text-based, it's graphical but using ASCII art. Pretty famous, pretty well known and it should be a pretty simple process for creating these games. So in this first video all we're going to do is kind of set up the game, kind of start putting some of the elements in place. We're going to go about it really slowly, really uh we're not we're not going to kind of jump into anything. We're just going to build it really really slowly. Um not a whole lot of game design, I guess you can say, just we're going to start coding. Okay, so we're going to use n curses for this. I'm using I'm doing this on Linux. Uh, you'll need some form of n curses. I'm not sure how that works in Windows, but uh, this will definitely work on Linux or a Pi, which runs Linux. And yeah, anyways, you get the idea. So, so first thing we're going to need to do is include our n curses. So pound include n curses. Dot h you will already need to have n curses installed and then obviously our int main just kind of standard standard c stuff there we're going to want to first set up our n curses so let's create a function for that called screen setup and i have another n curses tutorial uh, if you want to check it. So we're going to have to declare that somewhere. So let's say that this returns an int just for our purposes now. Int screen setup. So there it is declared. Uh, so we can use it and then we'll write it down here. Eventually we'll move all this into separate files and all that stuff. But for now we're just going to go for it. Okay, so to start up n curses, we're going to call the init screen function. And again, we need um, we need n curses installed. So make sure that you have that already working. And then so print f print w is the n curses print function. So let's do hello world for now. Uh, and we're going to turn off no echo. I'll show you what that does in a second. Basically, uh, it stops the turn when you type in the terminal. Normally, you can see what's being typed, and this just turns that off. And then we're going to refresh. I don't really understand the refresh function call, but we're going to do that. And then return zero. Okay, I'm just going to save this now. Have a folder here, and we'll just call it main.c. Okay, so I guess here we want to return from our main, and let's just uh, let's run that and just see if it's working. So it should be there. Um, there it is. So GCC main dot C, and then we want to include library and curses. I believe that's what we want to do, uh, and then that should have on to dot a dot out hello world so there it is right there okay so before we exit let's uh, let's wait for user input so we're going to get ch get char so that will just you don't have to press a button before you quit strange 
Uh, oh yeah, we need to... So, the problem right now is I can't type. And that's because end curses is still running. So, when you're... Before you quit, you want to call the end win function call. Which, again, is an end curses... Uh, function call which um, allows you to see this this problem I'm trying to type and I can't and that's because we didn't end the end curses session so I just create a new tab and that should be good to go um, so let's gcc main dot c dash l end curses And then dot slash a dot out. So here, now it's waiting for me to press a button before it quits. Now it quits. Okay, so that's all NCURSES stuff. Now our next, so we're setting up the screen. We're waiting for user input before quitting, then we're quitting, then we return zero. Okay, but here we want to set up the map. So set up as uh, do map setup. So this is another function. So again, it will be int. Have in there. Int map setup. And down here. Int map setup. Alrighty, now here we are going to uh, make use of the end curses move print w. So first we're going to move the cur the cursor. Um, when you run end curses, this is the cursor right here, and it's in a position. So if we started just doing the print w function call, it would just start adding on to stuff here. What we actually want to do is we want um, we want to move this down here and start drawing rooms so that's what we're going to do so that function call is mv and then print w and this function call is going to take three arguments it's going to take your y coordinate your x coordinate and then your string so it's going to look like that. All right, so that means that what we can do is we're going to move it to 13 and 13. And then for our room, our end curse, our rogue room, these will be the ceilings. So we'll put eight of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's copy and paste this. And we want to move down one row. Uh, we'll paste it once more. Oops. Copy it again, paste it two times. Okay, so then we want to move this down one, we want to start in the same x position, but move it down one in the y axis and change it to look like a vertical wall and then that will mean six open spaces. In rogue, the open spaces are the dots. So six of those. And then we want, let's make this uh, four of these. So one, two, three. And then again, we want to keep moving it down. 15, 16, 17, and then this will be the bottom wall. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. And there's our first rogue room. 
Sweet. So let's add two more rooms just for demonstration purposes. I mean, you can add them wherever you want. Um, I'm going to do something like this. And we, this won't, we won't, these are hard coded rooms. Uh, in our final product, it won't be hard coded, but for now, this will do nicely. And our final room. Not a lot of creativity, but we're going to make this one four spaces larger. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So now we have three rooms just kind of placed in there, as you can see. All right, so that's all we're going to do for map setup right now. What we want now is to set up the player. So what we're going to do for our player is we're actually going to have a struct. So we're going to want type def. Here we go. Struct. And it's going to be player. Player. And this guy will have a X position and a Y position. And let's say a health. Eventually we'll add more, so any um, like attributes that he gets or inventory or skills, or, you know, whatever needs to be added will go into this struct. We might have more structs in the struct. Whoa. Uh, but yeah, so a struct is just, we can now create as many of these as we want. It's just kind of a object oriented idea. Very important. Um, so now we need to create a new player. So that means here we're going to have player. It's going to be a pointer and we'll call it user. Then we're going to call a function that creates this player. So function that returns a player pointer. And we'll just call it player setup. So now we need to write that function. Um, we can also now set this user to it. So our maps been set up and then user equals player setup. So we'll go down here and write that function. So player setup. And it returns a player pointer. Can any questions feel free to ask. Okay, so we need new player, not the new keyword as in Java, but new player equals, oh, this needs to be a type player pointer new player equals, uh, actually we'll just space it out. So then new player, now have a, a pointer to a player, new player equals malloc size of player. And then that gives us our player. So now we can access the attributes within, which is the X and Y position. So new player x position equals, and we're going to put them in our first box. So 14, 14. So equals 14. And new player y position equals 14. And then we'll return that player. So return new player. So again, it's been uh, in our main here, we set up our screen, set up our map, and then we have this 
pointer variable which gets assigned to the player which is set up in this function down here and that returns back up here and it waits for input all right so we also want to draw our player so we'll just do that in here for now it probably won't um, we might as well do health as well right so new player health Maybe that doesn't mean anything right now but setting it up and then we'll do move print w and we're going to just move it instead of saying 14 14 we're just going to say x position uh, sorry y position new player y position don't just put y position new player y position and then new player x position and then the character for a player is the at symbol so at and there's our player now we're using malloc here so we're going to have to include standard lib uh, as you can see if we run it here we get this incompatible implicit declaration of malloc. It doesn't know where malloc is or what it is or anything about it. So include standard lib.h. Try that. So in function player setup, player has no member named x position because I spelt it wrong. So let's try that again. That should work. Yep, so the player gets um, moved there, but after the end curses uh, prints a character, it kind of moves to the next one, so we're going to have to move it back. I think there's a way around that, but uh, we'll just use the move function for now, and it takes a y and x coordinates, so move it back to where the player is, which is 14, 14, or new player y position. Actually, we should do that, just in case we go and change this, then it'll be a bit off so again this is all temporary stuff but we're getting the idea of how to set up rogue so there we go okay now when we hit what we're gonna want to do is to move our character around we're gonna want to use the W A S and D characters but when we try and do that now it just exits you like go up and just exits so we're around what we are going to want to do is use a gain loop. So that's going to be here. We're going to say uh, while, and we want it to be while this get character is not equal to uh, what we're going to call the quit character. Uh, so we'll, well, let's call it Q for now. That might be a little close to where the movement characters are, but we'll do for now. Um, so we don't need that get char, get char anymore, and we'd actually like to save what the user enters. So up here, we're going to declare an int called ch char, and then we're going to sign it here char equals, and then while that char is not equal to q, that this will run. So what's going to happen now is when we run this, it will just keep looking for user input until it gets that queue. So now we can try and go up and down and it won't quit. Um, and then if we hit Q, it quits. Uh, let's just see, remember this no echo thing? If you comment it out and run it, I'll show you what that does. So now as you can see, we're actually typing, which is not what we want. Q still exits, but we don't want that. So no echo. That's what that does. And there we go. So that's all that I'm going to show you in this first video. Um, and we'll just keep working on it, keep adding new stuff until we have a, a functioning game. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.